He's a comedian, host of the podcast, The Adam Carolla Show, and author of the new book, I'm Your Emotional Support Animal, Navigating Our All-Woke, No-Joke Culture. Welcome to the show, Adam Carolla. What's up, man? Hey, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> My doubt. And listen, this title is amazing. So what is this title really saying to us? Well, it's saying that we've taken a turn culturally and we've decided to just become ultra woke and we're living in kind of a new world order where people are worried about their jobs, they're worried about their family, they're worried about their career because of something they tweet or even a tweet they agree with or opinion they support or, you know, as we've seen with the COVID business, a doctor or a group of doctors you support versus another group of doctors you support. So this is basically, well, first off, it's a comedy book. I mean, let's, let's be clear about that. I'm uh -huh. not just preaching the entire time. Everything ends with a joke. Everything starts with an idea and ends with a joke. So you can be too woke, but is there some level of wokeness that's actually important? Well, I think just a basic golden rule, like we used to discuss the golden rule, which is just if you don't want it done to you, don't do it to others. Sure. It, it could be anything. It could be finding a wallet and returning it, because if that was your wallet, you'd want it returned. And it could be racism. It could be any phobia. It could be xenophobia and homophobia, like whatever it is. If you wouldn't want somebody to do it to you, then don't do it to other people. And that's about all you need yeah. as far as a society goes. What happens when people, however, don't return the wallet? I mean, what should the response be to those people? Well, the first thing you need to do is whoever lost their wallet, you should focus on controlling your wallet. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> my feeling is it's your wallet. You're in charge of the wallet. Take care of your wallet. When I was doing radio, when I took over for Howard Stern a million years ago, and I was doing radio, I thought, let's see how people act. See, see if the nature is good, good or bad. Mm -hmm. So we took a wallet. We put a little post-it in it that said, uh, if found, please call this number. Mm -hmm. And then we put 100 bucks in the wallet. We didn't put anything else in the wallet. Just if you find it, call this number. Mm -hmm. Then we took the wallet and we threw it all over town. We went to good parts and bad parts. We went to rich and poor. And everyone called the number. Everybody? So everybody. Wow. So, so people, see, what we're not really understanding about this country is people are generally good. I know we talk about systemic racism and systemic oppression, systemic this and built on a, a bedrock of racism and, and all this oppression and everything else. But most people in this country are pretty decent. Yeah, I agree. I think most people are decent. But I think that when we are in a crisis mode, though, that's when we got to keep calling that number. And it seems to me a lot of people aren't calling the number anymore. They're throwing the number away. Well, I feel like we talk about things more than it actually dictates, the subject dictates. Mm -hmm. I think we're in a never ending dialogue about having a dialogue. Mm -hmm. My thing is, is we need to get the hell to work. Yeah. Take care of your family, go to work, work on your education, work on your community, work in your neighborhood, just get up and get to work. The endless conversations really don't amount to much. And it's really hard to build anything on an endless conversation. I'm with you. I believe in the work. Let's put the work in. Let's stop talking about it. Let's get it done. However, that being said, people have got to want to get it done. 